Hi, it's Ben. In this video I'm going to talk about lifestyle, location and how those two things can help you to manage the symptoms of eczema. In particular I'm going to talk about the importance of rest, how exercise can be helpful, including breathing exercises, salt water, so swimming in the sea, and your geographical location, uh, the amount of sunlight, and also sweating. First of all, rest. When we rest, it's common sense that our body recovers its energy and restores function to damaged cells, and it also replaces uh, old cells and heals parts of the body which have become damaged through stress or through injury. That includes damaged skin. So if we don't get adequate sleep, then the skin won't heal properly. And in addition, your ability to handle stress will be reduced because the inflammation caused by stress in the body won't be adequately reduced when you sleep. So it's really important to get at least, I would say, eight hours sleep a night, if not more. And you should aim to be lying in bed or resting, even if you're not sleeping, for about nine hours. The problem for many eczema sufferers in respect of that is that we often itch at night. So um, what you might need to do is cordon off more time for sleeping so that you allow yourself to get your eight hour sleep taking into account the time when you're awake and scratching. Um, other, other things that I've mentioned in these videos can help to reduce scratching at night um, but a couple that I haven't mentioned could be just leaving a window open to get some fresh air and also using gloves, wearing gloves, that can reduce the severity of your itching. There was a, a study in 2007 by Wake Forest University um, on teenagers during times of examinations and that study found that skin problems like acne and eczema increased in severity significantly during times of stress. So that indicates that if you reduce the amount of stress in your life, then that should help you to reduce the symptoms of eczema. Things that you could do to try to reduce stress uh, include giving up or toning down on responsibilities that you don't need to take on, um, reducing your workload or the amount of time that you work, finding time for yourself and to do something that you enjoy that's relaxing, um, reducing the noisiness of your environment and um, one thing can be moving out of the city uh, that tends to be a lot less stressful you know for example living in the countryside so those are all some things that you can think about if you want to um, reduce your stress and that should help you to manage your symptoms of eczema uh, another technique that's been recommended to me is learning to consciously relax so by that I mean being aware of tension in your body, um, looking, feeling your body's position um, and wh whether or not there's any tension, for, for example in your shoulders or in your jaw, and then constant, consciously relaxing that tension. Um, that can be helpful to reduce stress. Another great way to reduce stress is um, breathing exercises, deep breathing. And what deep breathing can also do is stimulate the movement of the lymphatic fluid within your body. You've got two main fluid systems in your body, one the blood which carries nutri nutrients and oxygens to cells and then, remo and then removes carbon dioxide. And then you've also got the lymphatic system which contains fluid that removes wastes from cells and also carries those wastes to the lymph nodes where they can be processed and have uh, various pathogens like bacteria removed 
so it's a key part of your immune system and detoxification system. However, it doesn't have a pump like the heart, so it's moved through, it's moved by things like exercise, walking around, and also through breath work. Breath work and deep breathing can be, or breathing exercises can be really helpful. So an example of a good one to do every day to move your lymphatic fluid and reduce your stress is where you lie down for 20 minutes and relax your body. You could, if you want to, put your legs slightly up against the wall and slowly breathe in until your lungs are as full as possible. Breathe in with your stomach first, not your chest. So your stomach's going up first, then your chest. And then count to either six or eight seconds as you breathe in. Then hold for six to eight seconds, carefully counting, and then exhale slowly until there's no air at all in your lungs and your stomach's completely concave. And that should take eight seconds as well. So it's a, a 24, well, an 18 to 24 second cycle, depending on how long you want to take. And during that time, just try to relax and you'll find that not only um, is your breathing improved throughout the day um, and you breathe deeper, which means that you're getting more oxygen into your body, um, you'll also find that you're a bit more relaxed, so that may help you to reduce the amount of itching that you experience and handle stress better. Exercise in the right proportion can be beneficial to people with eczema suffer with eczema. Um, so something at least three days a week, including some strength work or core work and 20 minutes of cardiovascular exercise like walking, cycling or jogging. Importantly, something that you enjoy, so it could be dancing or walking outside and that will help you to move your lymph. Um, but be cautious, if you've got severe eczema and you do extreme or excessive or very demanding exercise, then your body is going to have more stress and more recovery to handle, um, which means that the amount of healing available for your skin could reduce, and also your stress levels could increase, which can result in more eczema. Um, also, your levels of cortisol, which is a hormone you need to handle stress, can become depleted if you do too much exercise. So, if you've got severe skin symptoms, it's better to, moderate, uh, to exercise moderately um, where you don't become too um, stressed within the, within the exercise. So I believe that's exercise that doesn't stimulate the parasympathetic ner nervous system, but only the sympathetic nervous system. It could be the other way around, I'm not sure on that one. But it's worth looking into. Sweating, uh, some eczema sufferers, not all, seem to benefit from living in a warmer climate where they sweat a little bit every day. And I don't have a, a good explanation for why this is. Some naturopaths claim that eczema is um, a result of elimination of toxins through the skin. And most medical doctors don't agree. But if the naturopaths are right, then the sweating would seem to facilitate the detoxification through the skin, which may be why um, living in a warmer climate or a more humid climate can be helpful for many air, uh, eczema sufferers. Where you, can't, where you don't live in a humid climate, you may want to try going to a sauna or steam room a few times a week and see if that helps you. And also uh, taking hot and cold showers afterwards or around the sauna seems to also help some eczema sufferers. Um, now, I mean, be cautious because sweating can exacerbate the symptoms of some eczema sufferers, particularly if you have a secondary bacterial infection on the skin. Um, so that's something for you to, to, to think about and look into. And sea salt and sea air have been shown through various studies to have a positive impact on the symptoms of eczema. So swimming in seawater or taking a bath um, with dead sea salts or Epsom salts 
can increase your immune system function, um, destroy harmful bacteria on the skin, which are often often present themselves as a result of um, the damage caused by the itching of eczema. And so, some eczema is actually caused by infections rather than um, an allergic reaction. And the sea salts can help to hydrate your skin. And salt water contains a lot of uh, minerals in particular and some amino acids that can have an antibiotic effect. Well, I won, when I was 15, I was lucky enough to go to Israel um, near the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is a place where, a, a, a sea which has a very high salt content. So you can actually go and lie in the sea and without really moving your body, you'll float right on the top because there's so much salt. And a huge number of people with various skin conditions, including eczema and dermatitis and um, acne, go there uh, regularly because it has such a powerful healing effect on their skin, as well as that the sunshine helps them. There was uh, a Japanese study, interestingly, which, in which 33 patients had their minerals, uh, their hair tested for minerals, mineral content, and the patients with atopic eczema showed that they had an imbalance of essential minerals and an increase in toxic minerals. These patients drank deep sea water for six months, um, which resulted in increased levels of potassium and selenium and decreased levels of toxic metals like mercury and lead. And the skin symptoms improved in 27 out of the 33 patients. So um, I'm not suggesting that you drink seawater, but it does suggest that the mineral content of salt water can have a positive impact on managing the symptoms of eczema. Another benefit of bathing in the sea is that you breathe in more fresh air and um, polluted air. There's a study that shows that polluted air is linked to higher rates of eczema. So you might want to, if, you, if you're interested in some of the studies I'm referring to, have a look at the article on my website which I'll link below this YouTube video. One thing about um, the environment, uh, which I think I've mentioned in other videos, is, is heavy metals. Um, heavy metal toxicity, particularly lead and mercury, has been linked to skin rashes and eczema. And um, salt water, as I've mentioned previously, does seem to have an effect in reducing heavy metals in the body. Um, you can have your blood tested and your hair tested for heavy metal toxicity and it's something that is probably worth doing, but you also might want to consider what sources of heavy metals there are in your environment. For example, you might have um, old pipes in your house, or you might have um, dental amalgam fillings. Now, most um, national dental associations say that metal amalgam fillings are safe because they contain, although they contain mercury, it's such a small amount that they don't believe it would have an impact, a negative impact on our health. And the problem with that is that there are a number of independent studies which seem to confirm that heavy metals released from dental materials concentrate in the muscles, connective tissues, nerve fibres and blood vessels. Now, I'm not saying that metal amalgam fillings definitely cause eczema, but those independent studies appear to me to suggest a risk. I've had the metal amalgam fillings that I had in my mouth taken out and um, you might want to consider doing the same. There are a few anecdotes on, well I've seen a few anecdotes online where people had uh, metal amalgam fillings, removed them and then uh, experienced a great reduction in their symptoms. Now it may not have been the amalgam fillings but um, I think it's probably a worthwhile thing to look into. Um, next, location and weather. So where you live can have a big impact on the severity of your symptoms of eczema. 
and studies show that, well, show that triggers for eczema include living in a climate with low humidity, the use of heating systems which produce hot, dry air that dehydrates the skin, radical changes in temperature, living in urban areas, regular exposure to traffic-related air pollution, and the hours of sunshine, that meaning where there's less sunshine, eczema tends to be more severe. So, I would recommend if you have severe eczema, and you don't have too many commitments or responsibilities and that you seriously consider doing what you can to mitigate those problems because as I'll mention in another video if you're addicted to medicines like topical corticosteroids those can have a severe impact on your health in the long term and it's likely to be much better for you um, to manage the, the symptoms of eczema naturally by making the, all the changes you can before you're relying on the um, prescription medicines so, a moist, warm and natural environment outside of uh, a big urban sprawl seems to be better for most eczema patients and if you have the opportunity to make any changes that allow you to move, you know, to move towards that kind of environment then I would seriously recommend it. I really hope that's helpful. If you like the video, um, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And the next video I'm going to do will be on um, medicines like topical corticosteroids. If you've got any comments or any, you think I've missed something about um, lifestyle location in eczema, please let me know and thank you very much for watching.